The stalemate war with hell was a thorn in your eye. Sure, other angels were more positive towards it, seeing the yearly exterminations as a fun activity to let out the boredom that came with living in paradise. Since you joined the exterminations as an innocent-born angel of the diligence banner, you were quite annoyed at how things always went down. Chaotic, just mindless slaughter. Your name was Harp, third commanding officer of the extermination army, specifically the support brigade. A legion of brave, innocent-born angel men and women, given a written exception by Lady Sarah to not only know of the exterminations, but also be allowed to participate in them. The paladins, as they were called, were angels from the virtue banner of diligence. They were the closest thing heaven had to people who were ready to grab rifles and swords to go to war at any moment. You were tall and muscular, had short white hair and cyan blue eyes. And while you usually wore your exorcist uniform, whenever you interacted with your half of heaven's army, you wore a heavy divine metal plate armor decorated with glowing sapphires. And despite it being quite tight, you had insisted of it not having boob armor and high heels for comfort, protection and mobility. Sometimes you felt as if you and the paladins were the only ones who actually took this serious. A feeling you felt was confirmed when after the previous battle the body of an exterminator had been discovered, her head missing as well. Ever since then you had been drilling your soldiers. They were all eager for revenge. One demon for every ounce of blood spilled, they said. It was during a training session you had been called by an upper echelon angel. Something was happening in the Senate building. Knowing that apparently the daughter of Lucifer himself had come for a diplomatic discussion, this could only mean trouble. She probably ins... The Fauma of Demon most likely had insulted the High Court. Fully armored with two of your men in tow, you entered the building only to catch what seemed to be the end of a song number? You and your troops looked confused. Until one of them nudged your shoulder. Ma'am, I'd urge you to actually listen to what they're singing. Adam, Lute, the two hell creatures that had come, and Seraph and Emily were singing about the exterminations and... Your eyes widened in horror. I don't think we should have heard that, muttered the other paladin. Adam had just declared war. Specifically, he was going to go after the daughter of the King of Hell. What are you doing? You shouted desperately, throwing yourself against Adam as the two paladins restrained loot. Adam was angrily shouting at the Princess of Hell as you pushed him and the infuriated loot outside the hall. Who does this bitch think she is? shouted Adam angrily. What the hell was that about? You shouted into his face. What? he barked. And you slapped him. You actually slapped him. Don't talk to me like that. Did you actually just declare war? His head slowly turned to you. An expression of utter rage on his face. Get the troops ready, Harp. Was all he said before pushing himself out of your grasp. Teleporting away to somewhere. Your gaze then turned to loot. She seemed more collected, albeit just as angry. 
It was an insult, she growled. Hell is supposed to be a place for punishment. Her eyes were twitching. It's so simple. You're a piece of shit in life, so you get sent to hell to be punished. You scoffed. <laughs> Loot. Trust me, it's much more harder to resist temptation on Earth. Loot glared at you for that comment. You're heavenborn. You don't understand. Are you defending them? No. Never. I'm saying I worked for it. I dedicated my life to being a good person. Angrily, you slapped your hands on your chest. I volunteered to feed the homeless. I, I failed my finals because I had run over a dog and I was more concerned about its life than my own, so I brought it to a goddamn vet. I tell you, the struggle was, is hard. You crossed your arms. But there are rules. And you two are breaking them. I, I mean, how? How is this even a thing? He's smart, powerful, and... It's sort of character for him to get so angry that he so foolishly would just... Throw the lives of the angels away. Lude crossed her arms. She looked at the ground with a sad expression. Though her twitching eyes betrayed her, she was still raging. I... I suppose it's the way he looks at the princess. I can tell. You furred your brows. Lucifer took Adam's first love, and then his second. His son, the first murderer. As a result of Eve's infidelity and eating that forbidden fruit. I suppose he sees Lilith in her. And he hates her for it. For a moment, Lute looked down at her feet. You of all people should understand the gravity of that mistake. You just told me how difficult it is for your kind to be good. Lute walked past you towards an open window, spreading her wings. Not to mention, the fact he takes care of both of us the way he does. Shows how much he has grown. Would you trust any female after what they did to him? You could hear your paladin companions go behind you loudly while you averted her gaze. Yeah. Thought so. Harp. Return to the barracks. If the last extermination is any indication, at least some demons know what divine weapons can do to us. We need to be prepared. You turn towards Lud. What about you? She visibly forced a smirk, a vain attempt at making you feel at ease. Well, as you said, we're heavenborn. We matter just a little less than you. She then flew away, leaving you with the paladins. For a moment you thought. Madam? You hurt the lady. We're mobilizing the infantry. Hoo-ha! It was some time later. You were standing dressed in a simple bikini as you were beating on a minotaur angel in hand-to-hand -hand combat within a sand pit. One-sided fights, at least to the untrained eye, were a norm among your ranks. It trained human-sized angels to fight bigger targets and told bigger soldiers proper prediction for mobile enemies. You were covered in dirt, scratches and bruises, this guy had quite a mean punch, especially his right hook. And your nose had been broken three times during this fight already. But you were an angel in heaven, your home turf. So that granted you a little bit of a better regeneration. Sweat was running down your body. 
your teeth were clenched. Heavy air was pushed out of your opponent's nostrils. But he was getting tired. While you had what felt like infinite energy at this point. Pure adrenaline. The Minotaur's hand came down like a mighty gut-splitting hammer. It missing you by a hair. Air brushing against your face harshly as you leaped forward through his legs. Without hesitation, you grabbed the monster's hairy back. With two quick steps, you stood on his shoulders, his muscles too big to really reach you from his behind. Your face turned into an angry visage, and you wrapped your legs around his neck, squeezing as tight as you could. The angel went down on his knees moments later, slamming his fist on the ground over and over as he tried to stay awake. You were cutting off his windpipe too strong. He was passing out. He could feel it. And then he raised his arm, making a peace sign. The paladin sign of submission during a one-on-one -on -one fight. Narrowing your eyes, you jumped off of your foe with a graceful twirl using a single flap of your own wings. The paladins started clapping at your visceral display of violence, might and prowess. Breathing heavily, you stood next to the giant, patiently waiting for him to stand. He shook your hand with a mild blush. Good fighting, ma'am. You nodded pleased. You're not too bad either. But as you turned around, you saw Adam and Lute. They were standing a little further away at the barracks. Adam was clapping, while Lute was simply scoffing. Sighing, you approached them. Isn't this little playing around beneath you, Harp? Ah, come on, Lute. He said you'd be nice. The angel sighed. We are just here to see how you're holding up. It seems like, um, you're enjoying yourself. You narrowed your eyes. Lute was Adam's number one, both in the military and his little harem. She saw you as a romantic rival, and yet there were some unspoken feelings between the both of you as well. Actually, Adam stretched before placing an arm casually around you. We are here to discuss the fighting plan. Your eyes met Adam's. You got a moment? Oh, and keep that bikini on. You already did half the work for me by doing that. You blushed, but just said, Fine. Goliath, you shouted onto the field as you opened the door to your private barrack. A tall, muscular angel with two crow wings looked towards you. Take over for me, for... You looked at Lude. There was a very fine blush on her face as she looked away, making you grin. Take over for the rest of the day. Goliath nodded with a grin that said, I know you know what I'm thinking. Your private barracks were a decently sized three-room building. Unlike the other barracks on the training grounds, this one had been equipped with comfort rather than function. The regular quarters were filled with double beds and small trunks for clothing, well, standard issue military stuff. After all, your troops were only living here temporarily. They still had their homes and families on the diligence banner. It was the reason the paladins usually accompanied the second wave of angels, after the first one had already wreaked havoc for a while. You sat down, legs crossed before Adam and Lute on your sofa. He was leaning back in your lounger while a second command sat on the armrest. So, uh, I was thinking, started Adam. Oh, uh, do you have coffee? 
You deadpanned. And then sighed. Yes, I do. Give me a moment. You got up and walked over to your kitchen, turning on your coffee maker, placing three cups under the dispenser. You listened to the grinding of the beans. Adam? Oh, uh, half cream and no sugar. Loot? I like it black, like my men. <laughs> just kidding, Adam, just kidding! <laughs> um, <clears throat> I take a lot of sugar, like a lot of sugar, and one small cup of condensed milk. Uh huh. Moments later, you brought the coffee to the other two. Once again, you sat down on your sofa. Mm. 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 His eyes met yours. You always know how I like him. You crossed your arm from an embarrassed tone. You said, Well, the wrist, that was all I could do after failing school. So, uh... Your eyes returned to his face. Why are you two here? I get why he is here, but what about you? I mean, I get why he is here, but what about her? Lute rolled her eyes, but instead of saying something, just took a sip. Well, we are here to request something. All right. You know how we usually send in the paladins on the second wave, right? Right. I assumed you would come for that. I, I think we should actually stay behind entirely. You almost dropped your coffee. You were about to suggest the opposite. That perhaps a full-on assault would be better than just sending in waves. Wait, what? You stood up, seething. Hold on, hold on. Adam raised both hands defensively. They've figured out a way to harm us. And I was thinking... We were thinking. Said Lude. And he rolled his eyes. <sighs> Lude and I were thinking it would be better to keep the paladins up here for defense, should they come for heaven next. You huffed angrily. Why? You said we should mobilize. For defense, yes. You crossed your arms reluctantly. Look, they no way to kill us. They, they killed Cinnamon, remember? Do, actually. She was one of your favorite other girls in his harem. As heavenborn, we don't have children. We don't really have families either, especially as exorcists. Lute. The angel looked down at the floor. I don't want to be the reason a son or daughter waits eternally for their father or mother to come home. Okay? You didn't think Lute was capable of such emotions. Just like hell, innocent born could not have children, though sometimes the angels of parents and children manage to reunite in heaven. According to the Bureau of Civil Affairs, Watching a dead reunite with their parents and grandparents, hell, maybe even meeting their great-grandparents, was one of the most beautiful things that had happened ever. Hell, maybe even meeting their great-grandparents for the first time was one of the most beautiful things that happened in paradise. A tear ran down your face. Why did you do this? Why did you declare war? An insult that just isn't enough. Adam inhaled. <sighs> because if all sinners can be redeemed, what is the point of earth? What is the point of living? What is the point of being a good person? You have seen hell, Harp. 
It's no longer an ash pit where Hellborn tortures sinners 24-7. They have evolved, creating a worse version of Earth, but it still is not the same anymore. These people did horrible, terrible things. Burn, loot, murder. He shrugged. Cannibalism, heresy, and they revel in it. Just because some of them feel a little bad after their drug highs wear off, doesn't mean that they deserve to be up here. Adam pointed at the floor. Down there, they can do whatever they want, and they do whatever they want, with a smile. We are here to remind them that there are consequences for everything. You sharply inhale through your nose. And it's fun, you hissed. Adam crossed his arms. It is because it is righteous. We are doing the world a favor. Wasn't it you, Harp? Didn't you kill the demon overlord who once was Jeffrey Dahmer? You nodded. Yeah, I did feel pretty good about that, I admit. Would you let that filth into heaven? You smiled hopelessly. Never. And if he did? I sure as I would never let him forget. Then we understand each other. This was an insult. Not just to me, or the Senate. But to God himself. <sighs> Fine, Adam. The paladins will stay put. We will say goodbye to your forces. He smiled. That makes me feel a whole lot better. A hand suddenly touched your shoulder. As you looked, you saw Lude. She had approached you while you had been thinking. An almost unnoticeable smile was on her lips. Harp, you're doing the right thing. She said with a little blush. Her eyes were avoiding your gaze. Curiously, you looked over to Adam, who was biting his lower lip while rubbing his hands subtly. You knew where this was going. Adam, do you really want a show? You saying that made Lute immediately retreat her hand from your shoulder. She hated it when you pointed it out. Ah, oh, come on, Harp. My two favorite girls about to make sweet, sweet music together? He mimicked the motion of playing a fiddle. With me as the musician? You almost deadpanned, and Lute scoffed. <laughs> we both know you want this too, you edgy bitch, barked Lute, before she grabbed your face, forcing you to look at her. You smiled, and then she pressed her lips onto yours. The gray-skinned angel's lips were deceptively soft. Though it wasn't the first time you kissed her. It seemed as her own worry for the coming war was making her more passionate, perhaps a little needy as well. As for the first time ever, she actually pushed her tongue into your mouth. To your surprise, it was actually quite round. You always assumed she had a thin snake tongue. Or, well, maybe that was just the lover's rivalry the two of you had. You groaned into her, her tongue tasting like the hyper-sweet coffee you just made her. She moaned as you loudly slapped your hand on her rear, while her hands began groping your chest, both of you really getting into it. Meanwhile, Adam was leaning back with his hands behind his back, with a dumb, pleased expression. 
And on the eighth day, he mused, licking his lips. God created bisexual girls, and he saw that that was the best fucking idea he ever had. With a deadpan, Lude pulled her head back, a line of shiny salvia connecting your mouths. Only for a moment you followed her, missing the feeling of her against your face. Dick, she grunted. Dick Master, please use my full title. Both of you looked at him. Why do we want to fuck this guy again? You asked. I don't know, she retorted. Ah, come on! Yes, Dick Master? Adam huffed pleased, and then said, Oh well, why don't you two come over here and I show you why I like that name so much. Why don't you two come over here and I show you why they call me Dick Master. With a sheet-eating grin, you and Lude approached Adam, sitting down on the armrests of your lounger, opposite to each other. Your arms wrapping around his shoulders as you giggled like schoolgirls. You kissed his neck while Lude kissed his cheek. Yeah. I'm the fucking dig master. It was a few days later. The day of the extermination. The portal already opened. A large wave of angels already flooding through it. You stood next to Adam, as Lude was already down there fighting. Hey, uh, Harp, listen. He said surprisingly calm. Yes, Adam? He turned to you, sliding off your helmet, kissing you on the mouth before saying, Harp, won't you attack the lower circles while we're busy up here, okay? Your eyes widened joyfully. Really? Because, like, I have all these tactics I want to try and... He put a finger on your lips, winking at you. Just try and have fun, okay? With that, you put your helmet back on. See you soon, he said before jumping into the portal, laughing maniacally. You smiled after him. See you soon, Dick Master. The portal closed once all heaven born went through. And with a pride filled chest, you stepped before your men, opening a portal to the second layer of hell. Soldiers! you shouted. Let's attack the lower rings, shall we? For a moment, there was a surprised silence, which was followed by the roars of thousands of men and women ready to prove themselves. And as you fell upon the second layer of hell, it was a slaughter unlike any other. Your army marched through the lower rings, orderly, brutal, and precise. As expected, zero casualties on your side. The message that divine metal could kill angels too, obviously not having reached the law circles yet. The demons didn't pose any threat at all against your heavenly armored men. They kicked down doors, set fires to buildings, and painted the towns of the law circles red. However, as you were having the time of your life, Finally being able to live your purpose, to do what you trained for for so long, be judge, jury and executioner of a loudspeakers. You read passages from the Bible, your message of righteous judgment, boosting the veracity of your troops, leading to a successful perch everywhere. 
but the layer of pride as the exterminators lost their battle there. Returning, covered from head to toe in red, hot demon blood, you are met by Lute standing at the gates. Her right arm a mere stump and bandaged up. As you saw her, you sheathed your warhammer with a shocked expression, rushing over to her, worried for her health. Her face was marked by unbearable sadness. Harp, she cried, face wet from tears. She embraced you, head placed on the wet plate armor. Putting a hand on her back, you exhaled out of your mouth. Loot? She was blabbering something you couldn't quite make out. It were sorries mixed in with hate-filled vitriol. The vitriol obviously not targeted towards you, of course. Loot, where's Adam? Hearing his name, she stopped moving for a moment. Tears ran down your face as you gently pushed her forward, realizing the implication. Thankfully, you still wore your helmet. If your men saw you cry like this, this would ruin the victory. Ma'am? asked one of the paladins. The... The Ordo Paladin is allowed to celebrate with a dinner... The Paladin Order is allowed to celebrate with indiligence. Return to your families, was all you said. Uh, yes, ma'am. I will inform the others. The man could tell something went horribly wrong, but thankfully he didn't press. Lord, come. We can talk about this. Tell me everything. You hushed as you pushed Lou towards the direction of the barracks. Meanwhile, as you and Lou mourned what seemed to be the final death of the first man, Adam awoke, placing a hand on his chest. I could swear there had been a knife sticking out just moments ago. He found himself on a beautiful plain. Flowers were blooming. The sun shining. A calm, cool breeze was washing over him. The smell it was. Nostalgic to him, with a somewhat newer smell mixed in. His heart pounded slowly as a deep calm overcame him. He looked down at himself. He was wearing a skirt made from fresh green leaves, like back then when he was in Garden Eden. Adam took his first step through the field. The grass was warm and soft. Butterflies were flying through the air. There was a strange sound playing from somewhere. Music, familiar and beautiful. Adam looked up at the sky. He couldn't quite tell if it was super early morning or super late evening, as the sun seemed to be setting, despite its shininess, tinting the air in a beautiful orange. There were a few clouds, but not enough to produce rain. He trotted towards the music, it slowly getting louder as he approached. His naked feet brushing over grass, so soft he hasn't felt since he ate that fruit. In the distance he could see trees. And then he looked up at a bird that was flying over him. 
its shadow crossing his face only for a moment before it vanished on the horizon. Adam continued walking until he looked down into a shallow valley. Its bowl-like hill covered in rows and rows of tulips and lilies. The music seemed to be coming from the center of the valley, where a small cabin stood. It was made from wood, a thin smoke coming out of its chimney. Almost cautiously he approached. Surely a place as peaceful as this, he wouldn't need to worry. He stopped at the door, and to a surprise, it didn't even have a lock. Gently, he opened it, stepping into just the most coziest of little houses. The music now seemed to be a little quieter, less beckoning, and more like quiet ambience. Looking left to right, the little hallway he had found himself in was well lit by lamps and covered in wonderful landscape paintings. He stopped at a door opposite to the entrance, the noise of mouse clicking and the tapping of PC keyboards behind it. Cautiously he opened it, and there in a comfy little gaming room sat loot and you at tables playing a familiar game on computers both of you undressed you and Lude looked at Adam with pleasant smiles hey Adam you said with an inviting tone we were wondering where you had run off to said Lude Adam didn't know why, but tears were wallowing in his eyes, which he quickly swiped away. Is everything all right? You asked, tilting your head. With a smile, he said, Yeah. Yeah. Now. <laughs> now everything is all right. Uh, perfect, I'd say. Lute smiled at him. Well, come sit down with us, Dick Master. She pointed at a free computer. We just started a new Minecraft server. Wanna join? <laughs> of course, is that even a question? He said. Chuckling, you added. Whoever gets iron first gets a little kissy from the losers. Adam laughed. <laughs> well, in that case, purse your lips already, ladies, because I'm gonna win. And with these words, Adam sat down, embracing his new found perfect paradise. Hey, thank you for watching my video until the very end. But before I say goodbye, I would like to shout out all of my lovely channel members. Hella, Bitbit, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, Sleepy Town, Angel, Zachary, Nicodemus D, Ash Wisdom, Ikea, The Tribute, and AJ Anime Girl for being wonderful Tier 2 and Tier 3 channel members. And of course, a big thank you goes out to my tier 1 channel members, your wonderful, wonderful little mates. <laughs>